Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Network Merchandise Shop. Pick up your logo merchandise by heading over to abvnetwork.com, clicking on shop, and start filling your basket today. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers a fully customizable carrying case that allows you to take your favorite distilled spirits or cocktail ingredients with you. Whether you're looking for something for yourself, a customized gift, or logoed items for your business gift shop, The Bar to Go can help. Check them out at thebartogo.com. That's the number two in the bar to go. Don't forget our friends at Neely Family Distillery now ship their unique distilled spirits directly to you. To order yours, simply call 859-394-3258. Tell them the ABV Network sent you. And now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we discuss which distilleries we want to visit. My name is McNew. Please join me in welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, along with our special guests, Lenny Eckstein and Kathy Cool. Hey, gang. What's up? Hey, guys. Hello. So, yeah, we've got a fun show today. We're going to be talking about distilleries that we'd like to visit. We'll get to that in just a few. Before we do, though... Kathy was saying she wanted to talk about something. What is that, Kathy? Yes. Um, I was listening to a podcast today. It was one we had done about bookers, and they talked about batch names, which one, as the coolest thing about bookers. And I thought, if you were a bourbon, what would your batch name be? Mm. 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 And this is tough. What would your batch name be? Hmm. Man. I feel like yeah. I need prepared there's always things that come to mind right so it, do you um, want me to start because i've sure. had a chance to talk okay so um i have this um saying about myself and it's <laughs> i'm a delicate flower damn it which means <laughs> i have two sides of me right? right and i like bourbon that's complex i like it to have some nice soft notes and i like it to be a little spicy so I think mine would be, I'm a delicate flower, damn it. Oh, that's not hmm. bad. That's not bad. Okay. All right. I uh, think and- mine would be a, 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 a saying that I've been using a lot and, uh, you know, for myself, but also for people like our friend Lenny here, a true entrepreneur, bet on yourself. That would be the name. Oh, of that's family. really good. Yeah. Because uh, to me, it just amazes me. Somebody would ever do anything like Lenny's doing because it's, you got to put up so much, and in in reality, if it doesn't work out, uh, we have the benefit of knowing Lenny's been doing this for ten years plus. Uh, it has worked out, uh, thankfully for him. He's a good guy. But even if you've got something, you got a great product you're going to make, and you're and you're dedicated to the business, things can still go wrong. And it, you know, it seems like you're risking uh, the rest of your life. You'd be paying off the debt that you incurred for this uh, if you had to go work a regular back to a regular job. So it's amazing to me. But all of that being said. Bet on yourself if you believe in something and just do it. So uh, I like bet on yourself. I think that's a good one. All right. Mm-hmm. Yes. McDoom, what's yours? Um, probably fine. Like, so it's either going to be a really, really good batch or it's going to be fucking terrible. <laughs> but it depends on like that everybody's different. That's how, that's how I feel about most fine. things in life. I'm like, it'll probably be fine. <laughs> probably fine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think Lenny should be the flannel king because he only wears flannel now. Well, this one's kind of a jacket. It's cold today. So okay. but still has the flannel look. It's yeah. yeah. I would take that. That's better than anything that came to mind. I mean, that's a <laughs> name. that's a great name for a bourbon. The flannel king. <laughs> the yeah. flannel. Like sofa king, but better. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. It sounds warm and comforting. Yeah. Someone's gonna grab that now. Uh, yeah, can I, it could be like a winter release. You can have it, Lenny. You, the, Lenny, that's yours. You can have it. Write it down. Okay. He'll write it down. That's that's good. That's It's protected now. So he wrote it down. So it was in ink too, folks. So nothing you can do about it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys grab uh, website names at all? Do you do? Do you ever do that? I, I do. A little bit. Yeah. I, I grab craft as fuck. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 
That's good. You can grab those type of names. That doesn't go under the XXX file or whatever. Uh, <laughs> no, it didn't. I don't think. Okay. Maybe it did. Okay. Let me check. I never, I never even looked at that. What, like, if what's what's under some of these names? Deer Hammer. Let me check. Asshole or. <laughs> what 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 are these dot coms? I'm almost afraid to look, so we'll let McNew look those uh, up. Craftist.com goes straight to deerhammer.com where you can order deer hammer whiskey. Oh, so you get redirected. Oh, there you go. That's right. probably that's I bet you that's the link uh Wes uses when he orders your products. <laughs> 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 oh, he's like oh, fuck off, like, oh. dot com that ends up at Deer Hammer on the on the buying page. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, Kathy, uh, please launder that shirt. I'm supposed to collect it next time I see you. You're not allowed to have that. <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Adam's done with it. No. I want to buy him in every color. Yeah. Yeah. She she made fun of him. So yeah. Oh, Said he wasn't I a bourbon celebrity. Said he wasn't a bourbon celebrity. Yeah. I didn't see him there. Hmm. <laughs> Even McNose knows that's ridiculous. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Seems all suspicious. Right. That's all. It does. It does. <laughs> Well, guess what, gang? It is time to drink. What is everyone drinking? Let's start with McNew. I'm going to have some new wrist. It's a single barrel pick by the Indiana Bourbon Club. Oh, that's good. You actually heard it. You never hear my good ones. Ah, I'm excited. That's good. So I've got a Boot Hill Distillery here. Uh, this bottle is more than halfway gone. Not expecting a lot, but let's see what we get here. That was actually not bad. Not as good as McNew's, but not bad. But again, McNew's got the lead. Lenny, you're next. Uh, I've got a bottle of Stranahan single malt whiskey from their experimental series. It's a 375, but it's unopened. And it was brought from uh, 5,280 feet up to 8,000 feet. Okay. Oh, McNew, I think he got you. He did. That was excellent. Yeah, and all his theories about high altitude and all that, uh, that's out the window. That's out the window now. Davey Wald's believed it too. He, he, <laughs> he, 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 he was not pleased when I told him, no, you just got a better microphone and now you're winning them. But he was like, no, I've tested this. And I'm like, well, not anymore. Lenny <laughs> wins quite a bit. So it's all yeah. bro science. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Kathy, you're the last one. Lenny's got the lead. What do you got? I've got a, uh, a, uh, uh, pretty empty bottle of the midwinter night dram i don't know which uh it's act seven scene worn out that's a twist so. <laughs> worn out. Right. got a cork no no Very nothing going good. on there no yeah. lenny wins how about that cheers, right. lenny. cheers guys cheers lenny all right what we'll do next, we'll take a quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to talk about what distilleries we would like to visit. We'll do that in just a few. Hello, this is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network, and I'm excited to announce a brand new partnership with Leatherwood Distillery in Pleasant View, Tennessee. Many of you have perhaps heard of Leatherwood via our co-host on the Bourbon Daily, Kaylee Baker, who works there. Well, they are now an official sponsor of the network, and we look forward to everyone getting to know a little bit more about them. Company founder Andrew Lang brought his brewing and distilling hobby with him during his years of service as a Green Beret in the United States Army. Whether he was at his home base of Fort Campbell or during tours of duty in places like Italy or Afghanistan, Lang distilled whatever was available to him locally. We are excited about getting to know Andrew Lang and his team better via our programming and are planning a trip down there for the ABV Network crew very soon. In the meantime, check them out at leatherwooddistillery.com where they will ship bottles directly to you, including their special Remembering 9-11 series, which is raising money for military charities. Seriously, get out there, buy some bottles, help a good cause, and let us know what you think. We're really excited about this partnership. Hello, this is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network, and let's talk for a moment about our sponsors, the people that make this show happen. First up is our friends at Moonshine University. In 2017, I completed my Executive Bourbon Steward Certification at their office in Louisville. The information I learned through lead instructor Colin Blake and their team there is something that I continue to draw upon frequently in my role at the ABV Network. It truly is the standard of establishing a benchmark of knowledge of the bourbon industry. From history to production to brands and people, it's all there. Check out their full listing of programs, including Executive Bourbon Steward Certification, 
production classes if you're considering starting a distillery, and much more at moonshineuniversity.com. I also want to talk about Neely Family Distillery. Back in May of 2018, I met Royce Neely at Limestone Branch's Craft Bourbon Festival. It ended up not only being the start of a great friendship, I started to truly learn about what makes craft whiskey so amazing. You see, I had been a bourbon drinker for over 30 years at that point, and like many people who had been drinking bourbon a long time, I was hard-coded into thinking Big Bourbon was where it was at and Kraft was on a journey to get there. Spending time with Royce and learning the things he does to make his whiskey taste better started to really get me to appreciate how things like sweet mashing, open-top fermentation, pot distillation, and the grains you are using not only makes your product taste better coming off the still, but also out of the barrel as well. I still love heritage brands and they make up a bulk of my collection. But when you find a craft distiller that is truly dedicated to the craft of distilling, you are drinking some of the best whiskey out there on the market today. That's exactly what's happening at Neely Family Distillery today. Check them out on the web at neelyfamilydistillery.com, or better yet, stop by and see them at their distillery in Sparta, Kentucky. And now, back to the show. Hi, this is Mr. Bill. You're listening to Bourbon Daily. Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today we're talking about which distilleries we'd like to visit. Yes, we are. So, uh, what distilleries would we like to visit? Well, that we have not, of course. So, this would be distilleries we would like to visit. So, not, not like, oh, we haven't been there in a while. We want to go there. This is, you've never been there. And it could be odd. It could be weird that you haven't been there. Like, Kathy wearing a shirt of one she hasn't been to. I have been to Stumpy's. I thought you haven't been there. No, you haven't been to Gary's place. Been, you haven't I been to Gary's. To Wood Hats. Yeah. We've got yeah, three I good mean, distilleries here, and she's only been to two out of three. And I know. Uh, yeah. Not bad, though. She's trying. McDo's been to all of them. <laughs> I haven't been here. I've not been there yet. Where haven't you been? To Gary's? Gary's. I haven't been there. Well, you and Kathy. I need both. to. Next well, time you I'm come with me. We'll go oh. together. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, one out in Lenny's great state that I haven't been to that I want to go to distillery 291. So yes, that's, that's definitely on the list of uh, places that I want to go to have not been so to. They've moved, right? They've moved. Yes. Just recently. I mean, you're talking. Okay. Um, Cause I've been to their, I've been to their distillery when they were in a different spot. It was right. like a little town. And I'd love to see the new place. And while I'm out there, we did a distillery run in Colorado okay. and we saw uh, Breckenridge and we saw 291. We saw Accent Oak, but we didn't get out to Lenny's place because we didn't know it existed back then. This was that's a few rude. years back. I know, but I'd like to make that right. Accent and Oak. Then, I don't, I've never heard of them. Lenny, what's the scoop on Accent Oak? Yeah, they're in Colorado Springs. Uh, I know Casey who runs that place. And uh, they do a mix of like, you know, they've got pretty huge distribution now and, and, you know, huge is all relative, but they're all over Colorado. They're in a lot of markets. So as they've gotten bigger, they've moved towards a blend of sourced and some of their own, uh, but uh, they're great folks. Um, Are they? Okay. Yeah. yeah I, I think. Uh, let me give you the real scoop on these. Some of them have to be <laughs> offline though. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, like, I can tell you a scoop on Breckenridge. Okay. <laughs> What There's the, no what, way what all favorite? that juice comes out of that tiny still. There you, you go. Uh, They'll admit that though. There, uh, there was like maybe a few years leading up when no one quite in the industry making stuff knew how to say they weren't making it. Right. But it, the uh, folks at Breckenridge are great folks too, and like they know and they say, and they'll they'll call it like it is uh, in the industry. Maybe on tours it might be a little, you know, who knows? But I, I think across the board, transparency is getting better and. You know, every state's got their different models. Right, right. Yeah, there's a few sh ones that are shocking that Lenny is not a fan of uh, out there that are popular on a nationwide basis. And he'll tell you. There's a ton of Yeah, yeah. I so, might be called a hater in some, some circles. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Uh, so so that's Distillery 291 is one I want. Kathy, uh, we're going to give you half credit because you have been to the old one. So you've kind of seen the place, but you can't get full credit on that one because they do have a new place. So, uh, so yeah, partial partial credit there. Um, I, I, I don't think there's any other ones in Colorado that I want to get to that I haven't been to yet. I, I mean, there's a lot of cool distilleries, but. 
there's a lot that you might not realize you should get to, but okay. they're actually really cool. And part of it is because of where they are, but also how they're doing it. I mean, there, there's a bunch. I mean, yes, sir. I don't want to turn this into the Colorado episode, but yeah, I mean, Peach Street is pretty epic. Uh, w- Woody Creek is phenomenal. Um, oh, how many? Um, uh, KJ Woods, uh, similar name, Woods High Mountain Distillery down the road from us. Um, God, there's tons. There's a lot of cool ones out here now. Um, just worth visiting because they're in such neat towns and they're doing something. And I think it gets heightened in a sense, no matter what state, doesn't be Colorado, Kentucky even, when you're kind of uh, interwoven into the fabric of the community and you become a fixture there, That I think that makes a distillery worth visiting in some cases. Yeah. Other distilleries that we'd like to go to that we haven't been to? I mm-hmm. have been to... Uh, Buffalo Trace a couple times, but I've never done Bourbon Pompeii. Okay. I'm dying to do the Bourbon Pompeii tour. Um, and I've never been to Castle and Key. Oh. Oh, yeah, I've not been either. I would love to do Castle and Key sometime. Yeah. yeah I think some like Castle and Key, there, there's a few that get like kind of filed into the everyone says you have to go. So clearly you do. Uh, that's on my list too. In fact, my list is long. I mean, you guys are in. <laughs> You're in striking distance of way more of my list than I am. So maybe that's why my list is so long. Yeah. But, um, mm-hmm. Well, one that's even farther out in the top of my list. And this isn't a particular order, but definitely a top of my list. Mount Vernon. That's way. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Got to see that place. I can't wait to check that out. Although I don't feel like going out there, uh, you know, to that kind of mid-Atlantic mm-hmm. East Coast area. Um, yeah. Got to see Mount Vernon. Mount Vernon. Yes. I can help you out with that. I can, uh, yeah. when you go, let me know. And, uh, I will. and I'll go there too. We'll do some behind the scenes stuff. So yeah. I keep I, he wants to get me out there. So we need to take him up on that. Yeah. If I ever go out that direction, I'd also want to go see Lisa at uh, widow Jane. Cause I've never widow been there. Yeah. Oh, widow yeah. Jane. That would be awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Widow Jane. You know, I got a, I don't want to say it's a new one to my list, but it was a newly inspired one that rose to the top of my list. I recently listened to an interview with Ken Lewis and yes. that might be my new favorite distillery owner. Was it, uh, was it uh, on the bourbon daily that you listened to the interview? Uh, I did listen to oh, that. Okay. Okay. Then I listened to another one and it was just some of the factors they touched on that were slightly different subject matter, more like um, deep in like, I don't know, like not, not just business ownership, but like steering business you know, talking about how, you know, his starting with that uh, was a party source. Was that his liquor store initially? Uh, well, he initially had um, a chain of liquor stores yeah. across yeah. Kentucky and then he yeah. sold that and just focused on the one well, party. Whatever source. It was called, I'm drawing a blank, but the, yeah. or I'm calling it wrong, but his transition from that to distillery and his awareness of, you know, employees and reason for doing things very, anyway, New Riff is on my list. Uh, riff, okay. I love it. Uh, real quick, I want to introduce Beth Burroughs. Beth, how you doing? I'm well. How are you? Good, Sorry, good. I'm late to the party. Oh, I'm a little right. earlier than I told you, but you are. You're doing good. Party. Yeah, we didn't expect you for a good hour, so yeah, you're you're here. <laughs> Fifteen minutes, so that's that's not bad. So we're we're talking about distilleries that we would like to go see, ones that we haven't seen yet, but we would like to see. So just talking about sure. that in discussion. Love here. it. Uh, Lenny, go. You go ahead. You got a couple more. Right, you want? I got a couple more. I'm going to skip around because there's way too many. Um, okay. Talked about Castle and Key. I'm very curious about Bentley Heritage out in Nevada. Have you guys heard about them? I haven't heard about them. No. So I guess they qualify as a craft distiller, but my understanding is that they're um, kind of on the bigger side of small, and okay. they uh, they do some really cool stuff out there. Be it like you know their malting program or devoting mm-hmm. a lot to growing certain unique grains. Or their distillation, like my understanding is, I could be wrong on this, but I've heard they have, so they have a, a, a huge still, but they, it, and it's steam jacketed, but they run it with an external calandria to get the temp up high enough right. to get kettle catalyzation like you would a direct fire still. And I'm fascinated by that. So I'd love to see it. Um, I just think there's, it sounds like there's some really cool things that are going to come from those guys. Um, nice. I'm going to rattle down the list. Uh, I've never been to Neely Family Distillery. And as far as Kentucky distilleries go, that might be at the top of my list. I guess I'm going to bump that one up. Haven't been. Yeah. Um, MGPI? God damn it. I feel like nobody <laughs> to go there. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I've been there. I've been there twice yeah. actually for tours. So, uh, just a lucky thing. Uh, one was a media deal, and then the other one was a barrel pick thing. I didn't know they did tours. Uh, they don't, but Great. they do <laughs> for special things. Yeah, yeah. They do when you're Steve Akeley, not for anyone. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, oh, yes. They're like, oh, we got to open this up for Akeley. No, <laughs> I just got the got lucky, I guess. Uh, last two on the list. I've got um, this is kind of a weird one, but Worthy Park uh, Rum Distillery in Jamaica. I want to see their damn thunder pit. I want to understand what they're doing. Love okay. that. This would help you with your rum. So, yes. Yeah. Uh, and it just also looks like a beautiful spot. And then lastly, like uh, a loop around Texas. I think I'm curious about like Garrison Brothers, Iron Root, Still Austin, Balconis. I want to see if w- the way they all speak of Texas bourbon being its own thing because of the climate. I, I-, I want to get a better understanding of that. You're so. right about that. I do want to go to Texas too. That, and, and you just hit on, on the big ones you want to see. So, yeah. And it's probably- Pretty Oak. Don't forget Treaty Oak if Treaty you're Oak. talking Texas. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. True. Yeah. So there's there's some cool ones there. Um, Beth, any, any you want to hit on? Leopold Brothers is the one that goes top of the list for me. Um, mm-hmm. I want to see the process. And, and so many people have told me, like, you've got to go. You've got to see it. It's so amazing. So that's probably top of my list as far as travel goes. Um, I want to see Widow Jane, too. I haven't been up there. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. So, that's what McNew said. That she wanted to hit Widow. Jones. Yeah, that one's definitely tops on my list. If I ever yeah. go that direction, I never go that direction. But yeah. <laughs> well, hit me up. Let me know. Let's go. Yeah, <laughs> was, I'm here for it. I was just at um, the Mount Vernon George Washington Distillery, and that was super cool. Oh yeah, yeah. There you go. That's Lenny. another one Lenny had brought up that he wants to go to. So yeah, I like. So that. cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Log still is one I want to go to. Yeah. So yeah. Oh That's- yeah. Looks like they got some cool stuff going on there and a real commitment to doing things a little bit differently. So, um, you know, it's got, they got the train stop there, got the, of course the amphitheater and, um, and, and all the bed and breakfast things. I mean, you know, places you can stay on. It sounds like a really neat place, but I haven't, have not been there at all. So it sounds like where someone might do a book where you could visit different places. <laughs> they probably need to be in the book next year. Yeah. 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 Uh, Becca's not too pleased because I have her uh, as uh, getting a selfie with her at Neely Family Distillery, and uh, a bunch of people are already coming in and wanting selfies and stuff. So <laughs> cool. <laughs> I wonder her skin a little bit. Trend like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, she's not too happy about that. But yeah, uh, those are those are good. anything else. I mean, there's you know a million distilleries you could go to, but any, anything that's just. I really haven't fun. been to Bardstown, Kentucky, and they have a ton right there. Just oh, right yeah. there in Bardstown. East, yeah. yeah. And even um, the Bardstown Bourbon Company, go get lunch there. They have some of the best lunch. Say. Bardstown. Yeah. Restaurant's cool, for sure. And Heaven Hill made their new visitor center. I haven't seen the new Heaven Hill visitor center. Yeah. That's yeah. right there in Kentucky. Yeah. yeah. You know, I've been hearing in the news that Kentucky Owl might finally build their facility. And yeah. uh, if they actually build that amusement park, I'll go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I would go too. I, heck yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. I thought that was dead, you know, cause you heard about it and they even had, they had Brown uh, groundbreaking uh, ceremony and all that kind of stuff. And then it just kind of went away and I thought, eh, they're not going to do that. And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, it's back on. So well, we'll see, see what happens. Soon but, you'll be able to come see me in a brand new facility. Oh yeah. That'll be nice. Right. So, yes. So Beth works for Jim Beam. So how about that? Oh, that's cool. <laughs> oh, are you going to be in the craft, the new craft distillery? Like me specifically, as yeah. in spending time. So I'm I'm American Whiskey Ambassador, so I don't technically, I live out of my van, um, if I'm um, being honest. Um, <laughs> van down by the river? <laughs> yes, me and Chris Farley, like that. Um, <laughs> but for us, it, it's more, uh, I mean, the facilities are obviously going to be different. I'll be down there quite a bit just because I'll, I'm going to be able to, you know, take folks through. And once we do open our doors, but. You know, we've got the yeah FBN Fred Me, you know, craft distillery. Um, it's not it's an experiential distillery more so than a craft distillery. Um, and then you know, new restaurants, new bar, new grounds. Like they just everything looks different. So super excited to be able to bring people back here. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. be the dumb blonde, and you talked really fast. What what's it called? You're fine. <laughs> so on the, the James Beebe Distilling Company campus, so the Jim Beam okay. campus, it's all getting, um, has been over the last 18 months. We did about five years of phase construction in the last 18 months. Um, so, 
yeah, it's, it's all different. So the Fred B. No Craft Distillery, um, and I believe, I mean, we're just calling the FBN, so Fred B. No. Um, it's a separate facility that was just built that Freddie's going to be doing a lot of work out of. And so um, it's going to be home of Little Book, Bookers, Bakers, you know, some of those more quote unquote premiums, if, if you want to call them that, um, and really just playing with all of the different liquid streams that we have and really pushing the boundaries the way that Freddie has been. So uh, we broke ground on that almost two years ago. I don't know, Steve, did you ever see the video that I took of them the day that we announced, like it was the groundbreaking day, but no, Fred I don't, I don't and Freddie so. had two different scripts. Fred <laughs> did not know that it was going to be named after him. So it was ah, a giant secret. And cool. um, I have the video of them like announcing, you know, Freddie is giving his spiel talking about, you know, how important it is. And he said, and we're going to name it the Fred B. No craft distillery. And you see Fred's head go from like, one, he was looking down to like knowing Fred. He was just like, that's not the script. Why is he going off script? Like, what is <laughs> happening? And then you hear him say, Fred, we know. And he like his neck almost snaps. I mean, the the quickness in which Fred turns to Freddie. <laughs> and it's just like a moment like he's it's such a beautiful moment. I'll just send you the video. I watch yeah, it. I'd love to see it. Yeah. Anytime that I need like a little pick me up, <laughs> I just watch this surprising of Fred because he's a hard man to surprise. So it was a it was a real special day. Yeah, yeah, you know, a guy who's accomplished as much as him to do something, something like that, uh, meaningful to him. It had to be, had to be a cool moment for sure. Yeah, I like that. Um, so, a- any other places before we close this one up that we got to get to? When does uh, when is is Beam open now, Beth? Is, or is that uh, when, it's soon though, right? It's it's this TBD. month as we recorded. <laughs> TBD. It? Uh, it's a TBD right now. It was supposed okay. to be. We were shooting for Monday. Uh, when like the initial date came out, it was October 18th. We're looking about two weeks behind, but if we're being okay. honest, two weeks is on two weeks is on two weeks. So, um, you know, it's construction where we're dealing and, and at bay with so, what construction uh, does. when this show comes out, we're talking November 9th again, check and uh, it may or may not be yes. open at that time. So just check. Uh, don't just automatically go. So I went, um, I forgot you guys are closing all this. I was, I was going down to Bardstown anyway, and I'm driving through and I'm like, I'm going to stop and beam. I'm like, wait a minute. There's no sign even anymore there and then i was like oh yeah that's right they're closed so you guys even took down like the entrance sign and stuff which because it says the uh, um james b beam distilling company now instead of mm-hmm. jim beam so oh, cool. everything everything will be under the the heading of james b beam um as we start to look to be a bit more inclusive of our brands you know a lot of times when we would say jim beam people wouldn't realize the knob creek label the legion label little book bookers bakers basil you know all of those are being crafted in Claremont. So we want to make sure that there was kind of an umbrella name of the distillery that they could all live under. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Well, we'll wrap this one up as we always do by talking about where people can find us. Beth, we'll start with you. Where can people find you? Um, well, running around. If you want to know exactly where I am, I would say follow the, the social media threads. I tend to be most active on Instagram. So I am at Bourbon Bella on Instagram. You'll see everything from you know, where I am, what I'm doing and probably some random animal photos just because so that's, that's, that's where you can find me. But typically, yeah, they're on Facebook with, uh, you know, Beth Burrows being my name, B-U-R-R-O-W-S. And you can kind of just, yeah, follow me along. All right, Kathy, how about you? Where can people find you? Well, you can find me on Facebook at Kathy Cool. All right. Not at Stumpy Spirits, though. You're banned from there. <laughs> I'm going to make it better. Do you know, <laughs> do you know that, uh, tomorrow I'm going to experience this. I, I, I marked my calendar because they're having their Oktoberfest, and I didn't realize they canceled it. I didn't see the cancellation notice. So I sent over a notice to Adam today or yesterday. I said, Hey man, where, where's going on? When's I don't see anything about the, the fall festival other than, you know, I'd seen this thing earlier. I don't even see that now. And he's like, Oh yeah, we canceled that a while back. I'm like, well, I had it on my calendar. He's like, Oh, come on over. We'll do Akeley fest. We'll, we'll, we'll drink, we'll drink from the barrels. <laughs> I was like, yes, Akeley Fest number one is on. Yeah. What time does Your that life start? is so terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. And, uh, are not there bad. tickets available? What the time tickets, tickets are available, but uh, as the show drops, it's already going to have happened. So darn it. <laughs> darn it. Fire yeah. Fest. Yeah, yeah look, show look up for the next bottle, year. Kathy. Yeah. All right. Uh, Lenny, how about you? Where can people find you? Um, well, well, before people find me, I, I want to rewind to something. Uh, instead of Flannel King, 
Um, <laughs> he's got to know. He's got one of awesome things. Well, we'll, we'll ask Beth this question too, since you're going to, since you're, you're rewinding, we're going to ask Beth since she didn't get a chance to do this. So oh, yeah. it would be because the, you know, the, the beam, ha- our, um, uh, Booker's has the cool uh, batch names. If they were naming uh, a batch of bourbon after us, what would they call it? So you can think about that. And Lenny's Lenny, who okay. couldn't come up with something at the time. Uh, came well, up yeah. With so mine was Flannel King that I borrowed from Steve, but now I'm going to borrow. I, one. I used that for you. Yeah. yeah, I gave you yeah, that. yeah. Um, <laughs> liquid streams. I think that's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> we, all of the places. That's my go bottle. Yeah. Streams. It sounds like all the places you'll go. Evan Sounds dirty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't yeah. think that. Um, I would also say, though, folks can find myself in Deer Hammer on social media at Deer Hammer on the web at DeerHammer.com. You can also order all of Deer Hammer's whiskeys uh, from our website, shipped to you. And you can come visit us in beautiful Bina Vista, Colorado. All right. Sounds good. Mm-hmm. All right, Beth, did you think of something that, you know, if they're going to name a Booker's batch after you, what would it be? Like after me specifically? Yeah, yeah. Something about you. Yeah. It could be a saying I mean, that you use. It could be something that describes you. It could be just, you know, or they just come to you and be like, Beth, we kind of want to name one after you because you've done a lot of cool things. Uh, but you get to come up with the name. I mean, I feel like you a lot of people internally, I have just been adopted as BB. So uh-huh. BB batch sounds kind of cool. The BB um, batch, yeah. Yeah. I feel like That's that might might be a fun one. I feel like the hats are a thing now, so <laughs> that might be an incorporated thing. This is this is like a new thing over the last two years, y'all. Now, okay. if I show up without a hat, people are like, what are you doing? Um, you could still do the hat, though, because they have the little drawing that goes with it. And the BB, they it do. you, and then it represents you. What would you have as BB? I think the I hat would be the cool thing. So I think that's the one. The BB batch. That's, what, BB that's batch. what I'm going with. All right. There it is. All right. I just think if this was actually a surprise, Beam had contacted us, and they are actually going to name one after you. <laughs> they they said she's going to be on the show. See if you can get her to say, no, it's actually not, though. Don't worry about that. <laughs> that's that's cool a dream. Listen, that's a dream of mine. So, like, really all you're doing is manifesting stuff for me, right? <laughs> Putting it in the world. Yeah. All right, McNew, how about you? Where can people find you? I am on Instagram at McNewABV, and every Tuesday on the ABV Network channel, hosting Bottle Kills and Last Meals. All right, for me, I'm an easy guy to find them at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got a company website. That thing's abvnetwork.com. Check it out because everything that we do is out there. Our shop, our classes, our uh, previous shows, so much more. Blogs, abvnetwork.com. Check it out. McNew, anything else to say before we get out of here? I'd like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review. That includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. And if you like what we're doing, we ask that you please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the ABV network. All right. Great job today, gang. For audience, we'll have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See you. Bye. 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 Peace. Before we finish the show, let's chat for a moment about Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro has a full line of products to help the home distiller. Whether you just want to experiment on a small scale on the stove in your kitchen or try your hand at a bigger setup in the backyard, Moonshine Still Pro can help. They have different still offerings as well as accessories and even grains from Goldstone Mill to help you make whiskey on par with what you get from your favorite distillery. They can even assist with a DIY still project by supplying some of the parts you can't make yourself. Check them out at moonshinestillpro.com. At the ABV Network, we're lucky enough to have some great friends. Amongst those friends is the Goldstein family, owners of Goldstone Mill. Goldstone Mill is a full-service mill offering a variety of heritage and heirloom grains. Their unique approach of working with mills around the country allows them to offer you affordable shipping opportunities to meet the unique needs of your distillery or brewery. They will consult with you to ensure the grains you are selecting meets the unique flavor profiles you are looking for. If you are a home brewer or distiller and you're looking for the grains that your local distillery or brewery uses, Goldstone Mill is the place to look. Check them out on the web at goldstonemill.com, call them at 217-254-6613, or shoot them an email at hello at goldstonemill.com. 
The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production. Thank <laughs> you.